This is our humble home. It is a uh, gear, Mongolian tent called gear, or also you can call it a yurt. We live here with my partner for uh, already more than six months. We just love it. This is Nonke. Hi. Hello. This is our house from outside. And I must say, everybody who sees it says, wow, from outside looks so much smaller and it is quite small so this is a five meter gear which means that it has basically just over five meter diameter it is just under 21 square meter this is one of the smallest sizes of mongolian yurts at least for sale in europe it is Actually, Mongolian made by uh, Mongolians in Mongolia and uh, sent over by train to the Netherlands by a company called, uh, it is a Dutch name, Noitmer Haast. So it so happened that a Dutch guy is helping Mongolians preserve their beautiful art. Last year, me and my partner, we came up with the idea to try and live in a gear. She bought one, she bought this one, this is 5 meter, and I have a bit larger one, the next size, 6 meter. But so happened, we didn't really spend more than a week sleeping in my gear, so now it's already down, and we've been living just in this tiny one for all this time. This is our kitchen, our 1 square meter, 1 cubic meter fridge. This is our king size bed, not a small bed for a 21 square meter house. This is the heart of the house. It's our tiny but extremely powerful wooden stove. We're very happy with it in a day like this where in the morning was below zero. Good morning. Everything is frozen. <laughs> Maybe some people wonder how do we survive in the winter. Beautiful! Wow! First ice! Well, this is uh, over 2000 years technology which has uh, been developed in a country where people live in the desert from plus 40 to minus 40 degrees centigrade. You can see it has few layers. Like this is the main one, it is a very thick field made from sheep wool. The tent has three layers, on top of it there is a layer which is so waterproof and on top of it there is a layer which holds all together and it makes it kind of pretty. It had strong winds and very strong rain coming down this year. You have a window just above you, and uh, as you can see, it's completely round, and uh, it gives a completely different sense of space. In a way, no place to hide. Visitors come and see the place, and they just wonder how uh, two persons can live in such a small place. I would say that it's not that difficult. You see how kind of synchronized and uh, you can't really hide much. Sometimes I believe that people do like to live in uh, bigger and bigger and bigger houses with smaller and smaller and smaller families. Somehow to hide. And not so much as the outside world, but to hide from yourself and somehow it does not really work. So why not smoke it? Sometimes uh, people ask me what is the difference between a girl and a youth? 
and I believe Huge is a bit more popular name of this tent but there is a slight difference and I would like to use the example of a farm and a house farm usually is made by a, a stable and a piece of land perhaps a garden a place for the animals a garden shed and a house and you can uh, say that the house is part of the farm in such a way there is a tent and yurt is a piece of land which sometimes has a outside kitchen, a little garden shed and the gear is the tent itself or the house We've been living in our little house for over six, six and a half months which is love the place, love the way of life it's very simple, we pay about 200 euros a month for electricity, water, internet and not on last place is the location. Simply located on an amazing place. So this is a beautiful day to be here. This is our neighbor. This is our house, which is located in a so-called mini camping, the terrain of a farmer, a friend of ours, in the east part of the Netherlands. This is our uh, so-called service facility caravan. <laughs> we have a simple toilet. We can do our extra big dishwashing here, a freezer, a washing machine, extra cooking space, and of course, this is our shower. And here we have like socializing space. And a beautiful day. This is another neighbor of ours. And some of these tents are for uh, renting. And we are so far three people living in gears and the rest is just for renting. This is another neighbor. This is our neighbor putting her six meter yurt down. This is the end of the season in the mini camping, so everybody must go. But it is quite interesting because people have to improvise, sometimes go in a terrain where it's slightly, let's say, not legal to, to put up a gear, but uh, as soon as nobody complains, like neighbors and, uh, and other people, there is no problem. That is the way to put it down, very simple. This is the woodwork, the rest is already in the trailer. It's something we have to do also. There we go. It's not such a nice day, but we're going to take this gear down. Let's start it with the door. We hope within an hour it will be down. We have already taken all the belongings out. Now we have to take our house away. We had to move once and uh, it was quite an interesting experience because we spent the night, woke up in the morning, made our breakfast, packed everything out in one trailer, we put the tent down, just me and her together, two of us, put the tent down, drove to the new location, by the evening, 9 o'clock, we cooked our meal in our kitchen, on the new location, and we slept in our bed. It took uh, less than 12 hours. It's just uh, so simple to put it up and down while using your bare hands, no tools necessary. It's just so magical. <laughs> okay, we did it. 
and now it's time when uh, we have to move again. It is the end of October here in the Netherlands, and the uh, regulations are such that the places like this, many campings, have to close. We are moving to a farm which is owned by a friend of mine, and we can spend a few months there. And uh, hopefully, next season we'll be back. This is what is left from the house, the bed. It's simply so huge that it can't fit through the door, so it goes first in, even before we start with the house, the gear, and it goes last out, that's it. Basically we have our house over there, and that's red van. I heard once someone saying that we suffer not from what we don't have, but mostly from what we have. And I can definitely relate to this. At the present, all my belongings fit basically in a small trailer. And I just love this. And there we are, just arrived at the new place. And as you can see, we already started. The gear is made from a few layers. A wooden skeleton fastened by a tight rope must be erected. First the walls and the door, followed by the wheel and the roof. Then follows a white cloth which uh, has mainly a decorative purpose to make the inside of the gear brighter. The next layer is one of the most important ones in the insulation, made from field, a very strong tick, and in this case a heavy field made from uh, sheep wool. We almost done. Yeah. We already have a visitor. The next follows the water resistant canvas, a very, very important part of the gear in this rainy country. And at the end, the outer cover, which makes the tent pretty and uh, basically holds everything together. It is just incredibly well built, and you can just put it up and down yourself, it's like some some friend's uh, joke, it, it is almost as uh, like IKEA house. I really, really love traveling and kind of nomadic way of life. Yet, if somebody asks me if I believe that this is a way of life for everybody, I would say definitely not. There is no way. Yet, I truly believe that this is a way of life that can suit many people. I don't think that living in a small place in a simple way makes me happy or happier. Yet, I truly believe that it gives me opportunity to be happier. Just like saying that Living in a big house make you happy, it's, there is no way. Yet, living simply definitely gives me opportunity to live happier. 